Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the workbench. Dan here, as always. Um, we're going to be doing a quick little addendum here away from the tunnel motor build. I know that's what you guys are wanting to see right now. I'm um, still filming parts of that, but right now I have some stuff i got to work on for other people, mostly customer projects, uh, in this case rail boxes. And I wanted to go ahead and make this video aside from the tunnel motor build to show you guys some techniques on these because I know a lot of you have been asking me when I'm going to make the next part for the rail box series when I was going to be talking about ghost lettering, stuff like that, uh, the weathering techniques on these. This video is going to be covering that. Uh, it's not going to be the way I was intending. The way I was intending to film in complete detail was custom painting a car and decaling it to do the ghost lettering. This step that I'm going to be showing you in this video and this little this little side project here is going to be actually an easier way of doing it without having to repaint a car. It's actually the simpler way, if you will. Uh, we're going to be demonstrating it. For any of you who don't know the Railbox Ghost Lettering and what that is, uh, here's a model to demonstrate. This is one I just finished for myself. I've been working on a couple of these cars. Like I said, I got uh, five of these I'm doing for a customer. Another three I got for another customer that I'm doing. And I just cranked this one out for myself. So. A lot of rail boxes and a lot of time to work on these techniques and perfect them. So which is good for you guys because you, again, you guys can kind of see now what uh, other techniques I'm going to be doing on these rail boxes. And I might have some more that I'll show in the progress because these all weather pretty similarly. But as you can see, this one I did for myself. This is one five zero seventeen, and here's a good look at that ghost lettering effect that we're going to be talking about. What happens is the graphic will peel off and it'll just leave little remnants of the lettering. Sometimes it'll completely uh, completely peel off. Other times, all the lettering will peel off. In this weird case with this car, only the lettering peeled off. This lettering stayed intact, and then the Railbox X logo, the next load logo, uh, started to just fade. Sometimes these are really interesting too. Sometimes all the lettering will peel off, the logo will peel off. Sometimes all the lettering will peel off, and just the logo will remain. I don't know why this is. It's just really weird. So these things are, you know, real interesting the way they weather. You can do these any way you want. But I'm going to be showing you guys the technique basically for removing the rail box lettering, the side lettering, everything like that. Uh, it's very simple. All you'll need for this technique is going to be an X-Acto blade. That's it. So the example we're looking at here is a rail box that I'm doing. Uh, one of them for a customer. Uh, this is the last one I've been doing out of five. And I still got a couple more to work on, but I'm not going to talk about that. The point here, I got the model pretty much prepped like I normally would in any other scenario. Basically what I do with this is I put on all of my grime coat in progressive layers. So I start with the acrylic work, build all the washes up in progressive layers to get the color I want. And then when I need to start doing the darker rust tone, I start mixing in my uh, burnt umber oils in progressive layers. That's water mixable oils. Spread that around. In this case, this is two coats of the oils, three coats of acrylic wash to get this tone, this common yellow burned rust tone that you see on these railbox cars. Uh, it all kind of varies between cars too. Uh, they all don't grime up the same. Some of them are lighter, some of them are really heavy. Like the car I showed in the beginning here, this is a very heavy example as you can see compared to the one here. So again, it's just kind of referring to prototype photos per car to see what kind of grime color you're working on. Anyway, I have the color that I need. I've got the basic patching um, done and I've sealed everything up with dull coat. Uh, that's the important thing here. Now, the way I'm going to be removing the rail box lettering is with the knife, as I said. Uh, in this particular case, I'm using a large X-Acto blade. You could use the small, uh, number one size, I believe, but uh, it is a little bit smaller. I like to have the larger blade because it does a lot more damage a lot quicker. In this case, I'm using a blade that's not exactly new. It's actually pretty used and scuffed up. The tip's kind of dulled down. It's not extremely sharp, and the key thing here is that you want a somewhat dull blade. You don't want a very, very sharp brand new blade uh, that's going to gouge up the sides because what we're going to be doing is taking this blade and basically scraping off the lettering. The lettering on these cars is raised off the surface because it's pad printed. It's a pretty thick application and I've only found that this works the best on the Atherton cars. I can't speak for the Atlas models and the Intermountain. I think the Intermountain cars especially would be harder to do this trick on because they have thicker pad printing. Uh, but on the Atherton cars, the ink is very thick and it's raised so that I'm going to basically go in and scrape off the lettering and it's not going to harm my weathering because the weathering is sealed in place. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate this. It's actually very simple. I will try to do this as best I can without getting my hand in the way. But basically I take the blade flat like this, put it against the car side like this, and I just start kind of digging into that lettering like this. 
Now it's going to be weird because you're going back down to bright yellow paint. That's okay. Uh, the thing with the lettering is that it does not weather the same. Uh, it stands out quite a bit, even on a heavily weathered car like this. All we'll have to do later to dull it back down is take some washes of a, uh, oil paint to blend everything together. The sides are also going to get uh, pretty heavy weathering in terms of rust pits and scratches, that kind of thing. Uh, so we'll be able to blend all this back together. But in this particular case, all you got to do, like I said, is just rub the lettering and it comes right off. And I just rub it across the border. As I get towards the edge of the the letter here, I'll kind of more carefully just bring it up to the side of the letter like that, and then scrape it off, scrape off the paint or the ink rather. And it leaves me with uh, this little bit of look here. I did dig into the uh, weathering underneath a little bit, uh, but that's just because I'm kind of sitting in an awkward angle. The car's not sitting flat. If the car's sitting flat like this, it's important that it's flat, otherwise you're going to start digging into the, your uh, surface. Because I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm trying to keep it flat and I'm poking the blade into the side a little bit. But you can see the idea here is that we're scraping off that ink. And it's not really harming the paint around the area. Uh, it's a little bit hard, especially around the ribs. All you got to do though is adjust your blade a little bit to work around that. And then just scrape that ink off. Now it is a little bit tedious, but it's a pretty easy technique to do here. And once you get the feel for it and know how you need to work around this, you can actually do this relatively quickly. I've already done one car side the entire way here, as you can see. I scraped off all the rail box lettering and then the small lettering as well. And then I have the rail box, the next load, any road logo taken off. That'll be the easy part. I'll show that in a second. But I'm just going to go ahead and start chipping away at this. You can be pretty sloppy with this in a way too sometimes because a lot of times you'll see the lettering uh, on these cars will still have some black paint left in it. So sometimes you can just kind of roughly chip up the lettering like that and you can leave some of the uh, some of the ink like this. It creates a cool little effect of some of the lettering just kind of barely hanging onto the sides. That's a cool little effect. Now though you might think this is the hardest part to get rid of, this is actually the easiest. If you take your knife and just rub it across the side of the car just slightly across the surface you'll start taking that lettering off pretty quick the lettering up here same treatment you just go in real carefully and scrape it and because it's a raised surface here it comes right off like I said if we do get any scrapes or scratches into the car side into the weathering anything like that we can go back and touch it up later it's not that big a deal it's easy to do but you can see how that lettering just literally comes right off it's so easy it's a little bit harder as you get to uh, the rib sections of the car obviously because it's a raised portion but all you got to do is again turn the blade sideways and then try to get it into the rib as close as you can just to remove that as I go along too, I'll take a, a brush like this and kind of take some of that extra uh, peeled graphic off. That way I can see where I'm working with here and see if there's any other little bits that I need to remove. I'm not again too worried about that either because I don't mind having some of that paint left in these little areas because it makes it look a little bit more weathered. Like you can still see some of the parts of the graphics peeling which is a cool little effect. And here is the completed effect. You can see all the lettering is off. Looks really good. And it's so simple to do that it literally took me 20 minutes per side to do. Alright, so there's one way of doing that. Uh, the next time I'll show this kind of demonstration, I'll be doing a car that I'm going to basically strip down and decal. That'll be the other way. I'll demonstrate this, but that won't come till later. I still got to get some cars to do for that effect. But for now, here's another variation of doing it. It's actually the easiest out of all of them that I. All right, so that's another variation on doing this Railbox Ghost Larry. It's a very easy technique. That only took me 20 minutes to do that whole car, and it's a great technique again because you can replicate some of this Ghost Larry. They're very popular prototypes, and just for fun, it's been a couple days. This is the model now completed, and you can see some of that lettering really stands out now that we've put all the final grime colors 
on there. We got the rust pitting, graffiti, patching, everything else. It all is very nicely enhanced, as you can see. So this one is going to be going back to a guy in Texas. I'm actually going to be making another one of these for myself as well, this exact same car number because the prototype is really cool. Um, but anyway, that's the technique in a nutshell. The next technique we're going to be covering on the ghost lettering, like I said, is going to be the bit harder process here where you basically paint a car yourself or you can take the stock rail box car, strip the stock lettering off, leave it yellow, weather the whole thing and then put the decals over. That's probably how I'm going to be doing the next one. That video should be coming out here in the next couple months, hopefully maybe towards the end of fall. I got a lot of other projects I'm doing right now. I'm really busy right now. I got a lot of a lot of different models I'm doing for other people, for customers, and I have a bunch of heavy builds that I'm doing right now trying to uh, take up a lot of my extra summer time right now. Uh, my Sunday's off, my Thursday night's off, trying to get a lot of heavy builds done, locomotives done, that kind of thing. And again, we'll be returning to the tunnel motor build in the next video, so guys, you guys can keep an eye out for that. But until next time, thanks for watching this. Hope you, hopefully you learned something from this. I'll see you next time, guys. Take it easy.